Today we have put together a video on kitchen backsplash tile installation. Hi everybody, I'm Jim Deardorf and this is Detroit DIY. We've put together a mini series, a complete tutorial on kitchen backsplash tile installation. I hope you enjoy yourself. Make sure that the thin set you get is what they recommend for this tile. I'll be using white thin set and I'll be using a light gray grout. Um, so then what you want to do next is put your, your spacers in between your tiles and just kind of tape them to the wall. Determine what type of overlap you want. If you want a half tile overlap, something like this or if you want a one-third. So we're going with a one-third overlap. So when I cut this tile, I'll start down there with a full piece and then one-third. So what you want to make sure of when you lay it out, I have the spacers in between them, so this is the gap. And you get to the end, you want to make sure that you're not going to wind up with a little piece of tile right here. And that you're going to have plenty of room. So when I come down and I put this tile on right here, it's going to be a one-third overlap. Something like that. So it's going to leave me a nice piece of tile. So no matter what, I won't have a small piece here. If it winds up where you only have a, a really small space left, you know, like this or something, you don't want that. So what you want to do is go back to your starter tile at the other end and cut a third off of that one to shift everything over so then this would wind up back here and you would have a larger piece of tile and that's all there is to it so I'm going to get this all cleaned up I'm going to put some I'm going to clean the wall with some TSP and get it all ready for the tile to be installed I've cleaned the walls using TSP. I've got all my plastic on. Um, I've got four pieces of tile cut to the one-third length. And the TSP that I use to clean the walls is what you would use also if you were preparing for paint. Um, and it'll etch the paint a little bit and it's going to help the um, mortar, the thin set, adhere to the wall. So what I've discovered though is I got these tiles at Lowe's and they put a barcode on the back of each tile. Well, you can see it right through the tile. Unfortunately, not on the camera, but you can. And these little tile, these little stickers have to come off. And I don't know what kind of adhesive they used, but as you can see, it just kind of rips and tears. And even by removing it like that, I can still see a shadow through the tile of the adhesive. Even when I hold it on the wall, I can still see that little square. So this concerns me. I don't know why they wouldn't have put this barcode on the glass where it would be much easier to clean off. Or in fact, why they put it on there with that type of adhesive in the first place. So I'm having to go through with a razor blade and try and clean all this off. You know what's really horrible? I have 140 of these to do. So as soon as I get a few cleaned up, we'll start doing some tile. Okay, I'm still working on getting the stickers off. I went and got some goo gone to help me do that. Also, in the process, I discovered that I need to sand the walls. So I'm using some, two some 150 grit sandpaper and I'm sanding the walls to get a rougher surface the TSP is not enough on its own so basically we're just going to stuff it up real good so that the thin set will stick to it better Then when I'm finished with this, I'm just going to damp cloth them down because I've already um, used the TSP to, to clean the surface. 
so I'm not worried about that. I know there's no grease and grime on here. So I will just damp cloth it and we'll be good. I'm going to get this finished up and we'll be back. Okay, I got about 50 tiles cleaned up now and I got my thin set mixed up and I'm going to get started here on some tile. I changed my mind and decided to start at the other end because it's more visual than where I was going to start. But the layout is still the same, just the opposite. So what we want to do is for the thin set that you have, you want to make sure that you have the correct trowel for the thin set and the tile. The correct thin set for the tile and the correct trowel. We'll be using a 3 16 notched trowel. And we're going to be using our thin set that is designed for this. And you want it kind of thick. So what we want to do is back trowel it on first. Now I don't want to get a, a big area going all at once. But I do want to get about two tiles up. It's a little tight here. Now the thin side will stay workable for quite a while so you don't have to feel rushed. Alright, now what I'm going to do is just take my V-notch. I'm going to pull it down. And the same thing here. So now because I know my surface is smooth, I don't have too much to worry about. So I'm going to put a couple spacers underneath because I want to be able to caulk it along the counter when I'm finished. So I'm going to just go ahead and set this first piece in here. Lift it up a little bit. And lay the spacer down on its side. Get it underneath of there. Just like that. Give it a good press in. So now I'm going to go ahead and set my quarter, my one third cut. I want to make sure that my cut edge is towards the towards the trim. Just like that. Now I am going to nudge these away from the trim a little bit so that this can be caulked also. So I'm going to go ahead and give them a little about an eighth of an inch, the same thing, just for a nice bead of caulk. Just like that. I need to get a little more mud on down here for this second piece.
same thing, a couple more spacers. Two more right in the middle, right here, and right here. And I want to push my towel tight against it, but I want to make sure I don't scoot this one with it. I'm going to go ahead and put a spacer in down here just so that doesn't happen. And the same thing here. Now we'll go ahead and start our next row. The same thing. If you get... I know it's hard to see because my hands have to kind of be in the way. If you get thin set between the tiles, this make a handy little cleaning tool to get it out of there. You can get them a little bit wet. And pull it out. So I'm going to get a little bit more up top here. And then start the next row. I've got a few tile up and I decided to stop because I had some cuts that I need to make. I did make one, but I wanted to show you um, what I'm cutting with and how I'm doing this. So let me show you where I got, not real far. Here we go. So I'm at this outlet right now. I'm going to try and position you in the best way that I can here. So what I'm going to do here is I need to cut this small piece right here and then this piece is going to have multiple cuts in it on this side because of the window and the trim work and then this piece on top is just going to need a small notch in it now some people will take the outlets loose and tile and let these tangs tighten against the tile when they put the outlets back in I do not like to do that because I've had tile crack before when I'm trying to get the outlets tight enough that they're not sliding around. So what I do is I use a spacer back here. They sell spacers to shim these out. And I'll go further into depth into that when I get to those spacers. So what I like to do is to take one of the little spacers for the tile. These are 8 inch spacers. And they're 8 inch either way. This way across this dimension or their thickness this way. So I'm just going to set this in here at the, at the bottom. Well, I'm going to hold it in there. And I'm going to measure over to the inside of this electrical box. And it's going to be one inch. So I, I need a one inch piece of tile. Now, when I was cutting this right here, I was having some issues with exactly how I was going to do this with the tile saw I have. But I figured it out, but I um, wasted a couple pieces of tile in the process because I laid it down and I didn't realize that it was going to cut away too much of the color on the back and that you would see that through the face of the tile. So that was kind of a... A mistake but the nice thing is is I can still utilize pieces of this tile so what I like to do is since you can't draw on this tile and there's nothing you can do I like to put a piece of tape on it so I'm pretty sure one inch is gonna land right here oh just like that then I measure my inch and I mark it 
and, and I, I like to use a, a, a ink pen for that I hope my big hands aren't in the way and then I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom mark it at one inch there we go now I'm going to take my speed square and just draw my line across it now I'm going to leave this tape on there when I cut it the tile saw I'm using I borrowed it from Brett it's an inexpensive tile saw um, if you're not a professional tiler you can pick one up at um, Harbor Freight or um, Home Depot or Lowe's for like 70 bucks somewhere between 50 and 70 bucks so what I want to do here now is take my longest measurement from the bottom of the windowsill to the panel and then I will I'm going to cut that tile at that length and then I'll take it back out and notch the rest of what I need out of it. So I'm going to do the same thing. I want an eighth of an inch between the I'm going to just measure off of the edge of this other piece of tile because it's exactly where I want it. So that's going to bring me over to two and two and a half inches. So I'm going to do the exact same thing over here is to put my tape measure up here at two and a half. To start me a piece of tape right here on the bottom come back with my tape measure and mark my two and a half And then the same thing, put the speed square on, I'm going to draw my line. And once that's cut, I'll go ahead and make the measurements for the rest of this. Um, once I get it spaced up. And just a little bit easier to do. So let's go out in the shop and get some cutting done. Okay, we're in the shop and this is the wet saw that we're going to be using. It's a small 7 inch wet saw. It's perfect for cutting these smaller tiles. It is not an industrial type machine, um, but it's going to do what we need it to do. So I'm hoping I've got you in a good spot because water's going to fly. Normally I keep this down a little bit so that it doesn't soak me so bad. But for you guys to have a better view, I'm going to leave it up a little bit. It does have a fence that you can put on it to assist you in cutting... Um, cutting lengthwise for what I'm doing that's why I put the line on here I'm just going to freehand these pieces through without using this fence so let's get started like that cuts it like butter get our tape off of there and there we go minimal chipping on the back but it doesn't matter because that is the back edge and we're going to caulk this anyway a little bit of roughness on the face um, we're not concerned with that either we'll take our rag we'll give that a little wipe off it gets to be pretty smooth so and when we caulk it when we're all done along these finished edges you'll never see any of that so let's cut a couple more pieces, get back inside and get some measurements for the notches that we need on the, on the piece around the window trim.
inside, get this other one marked up, and come back out and get it cut. I'd like to thank you for watching. Please keep your eyes open for part two coming next Sunday. If you enjoyed yourself, click on one of these two videos right here that are going to pop up. And I'd like to give a special thanks to Tony Iconelli and Brett Wimmer because none of this could happen without